Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Hello Pharmacology. So I am back with the one more interesting new video on the role of pyridostic men in the treatment of myasthenia gravis. Let us see the concept behind the use of pyridostic men in myasthenia gravis. So coming to the learning objectives, at the end of this session you should be able to answer the mechanism of action, side effects as well as the clinical uses of pyridostigmin. So moving on to the mechanism of action of pyridostigmin. So the mechanism of action of pyridostigmin is similar to that of the neostigmin. So basic understanding we should know is the neurotransmitter acetylcholine is converted into acetate and choline at the synaptic junction with the help of acetylcholine nesterase. So thereby there will be reduction in the acetylcholine levels. So what this pyridostigmin will do is, it is a indirectly acting muscarinic agonist which acts at the synaptic junction that is at the neuromuscular junction and you can see here it is a reversible cholinesterase inhibitor. So thereby what happens once the pyridostigmin inhibit this acetylcholine esterase activity. So the levels of acetylcholine will increase. So there will be increase in the acetylcholine levels. So in turn, it will lead to enhanced stimulation of nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. So remember, the pyridostigmin, since it is a quaternary amine, it does not cross blood brain barrier, it doesn't have any function in the CNS, but it predominantly acts peripherally. So, especially on the peripheral skeletal muscles. So, quaternary amine structure does not allow passage into brain. So, it is similar to that of the neostigmine. Neostigmine also a quaternary amine which does not cross the blood brain barrier. So coming to the clinical use of pyrostigmin. So it is used in the treatment of myasthenia gravis. It is a first line drug which is used in the treatment of myasthenia gravis which is a autoimmune dis disorder which is characterized by antibodies against the NM receptors. So this pyrostigmin by increasing the acetylcholine levels they will remove the blockade on the NM receptors. So this is the NM mediated action and when it compared with the neostigmin, the pyridostigmin has got longer acting of life and its action will also be prolonged when compared to the neostigmin. So basically it increases the acetylcholine levels and it outcompetes the myasthenic antibodies at the neuromuscular junction and it improves the skeletal muscle weakness. So basically it will increase the strength of the muscles. So coming to the side effects which are caused by pyridostigmin. So basically the side effects is due to the cholinergic overstimulation. So in the myasthenic gravis there was a stimulation of acetylcholine and acetylcholine was acting at the nicotinic receptor that is specifically at the NM receptor at the neuromuscular junction. So along with that this pyridostigmin will also stimulate the peripheral muscarinic receptor which is the cause of adverse effects. So when it stimulates the gland through the M3 receptors, it can cause sweating, salivation and lacrimation in the GI and uh, genitourinary uh, tract. It can lead to diarrhea, abdominal cramping and uh, urinary urgency due to the M3 receptor stimulation on the smooth muscles of the intestine as well as the urinary bladder and on the heart there will be activation of M2 receptor that leads to the 
reduction in the heart rate leading to bradycardia so on the respiratory system due to the activation of hem3 receptors which are present in the bronchial smooth muscle it leads to the contraction of bronchial smooth muscle leading to the bronchospasm should be very careful with the asthmatic individuals and on the musculoskeletal system so excess of stimulation of the skeletal muscle fibers or over excitation can occur and this can lead to cholinergic crisis too so on the eye due to the hem3 receptor stimulation which is present on the circular muscle fibers of the iris it will lead to meiosis that is constriction of the pupil so this is the diagrammatic representation of the side effects of paradostigmine so that you can remember it easily so on the glands due to the m3 receptor stimulation it leads to sweating salivation lacrimation so m3 receptor activation on the gi tract lead to abdominal cramping and also it increases the peristalsis leading to diarrhea and m3 receptor activation in the bladder it will lead to increased detrusor muscle contraction leading to the increased urination that is urinary urgency on the of m2 receptor activation lead to decrease in the heart rate that is bradycardia m3 receptor activation on the bronchial smooth muscles lead to bronchospasm and m3 receptor which are present on the skeletal muscle due to the over excitation it can lead to cholinergic crisis as well so on the i m3 receptor which are present on the circular muscle fibers of the eyes can lead to contraction of the circular muscle fibers and lead to meiosis so coming to the summary of pyridostigmin so as you know the mechanism is it is a reversible cholinesterase inhibitor where it peripherally increases the acetylcholine levels and thereby in turn it increases the strength of peripheral skeletal muscle contractions so clinical use it is mainly used as a first line drug in the treatment of myasthenia gravis where it will compete with the myasthenic auto antibodies against the nm receptors so side effects is mainly due to the cholinergic overload like sweating salivation diarrhea urinary urgency bradycardia hypotension bronchospasm and meiosis and also you should remember that uh, a pyridostigmin being a quaternary amine it does not cross the blood brain barrier so it has got predominant peripheral action on the skeletal muscle fibers and also you should remember that it has uh, it has got only peripheral action and it has got prolonged action when compared with the neostigmin and also please remember that whenever you are treating the myasthenia gravis so along with the pyridostigmin you need to give a atropine which is a anticholinergic agent which will help in overcoming this cholinergic overload side effects so this was about the brief concept about pyridostigmin and its role in treatment of myasthenia gravis if you find this video useful please do subscribe to my channel i love pharmacology and do not forget to share and hit the like button and bell icon for more updates and interesting concepts thank you